guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Old West Empresario, and it is a sequel to Pioneer Days by TMG. The game plays two to four players, it takes about an hour to play, and is for ages 12 and up. In the game, the Old West Empresario, you're basically going to be trying to draft tiles to make your own Western Empire. As you're going to be doing so, you're going to be rolling dice, selecting those die from certain areas on the board. They're going to have certain numbers located underneath them, will be the tiles associated, and you can choose to do a couple different actions. One could be to activate spaces in your tableau, another could be to take a specific building and turn it face down, uh, which allows you to then hopefully turn it face up as a building, and you're trying to gather these tiles in a row and have a certain placement rules with them. The end of the game, the player who has the most points based on their tableau, based on the finished buildings, and certain rule requirements based on this little planning sheet here, is going to win the game. Let's go ahead and take it down below. I'll show you what you get in the game, and then I'll show you how to play and then my review. So here we have a two player setup for the game Old West Empresario and as you can see there's quite a bit involved in this game. The first thing you'll notice is that every player is going to have a starting town hall building which is already pre-built. There is non-built and then there is built and that's simply the front or the back side of these tiles here. However town halls are just built in general just like these little native settlements here. Everybody's going to get three dollars and then they're going to take two of these random characters that they can go ahead and choose from the advanced side or you guys can choose to play the basic side which all have the same rules built onto them once you've selected one of these then you're going to go ahead and discard the other ones in this case we're simply going to be playing a two-player game so we do not need these extra two town halls or these extra die when playing the game you're simply going to get two times the number of players and die plus one extra die and then you're also going to assign somebody the first player maybe the first person who's went to an old western town remove the rest of the characters you won't be needing them for this specific game you'll also be going ahead and putting in pools for the specific town populations this will actually end the game if this population uh, pool gets run out along with if this deck runs out as well but the main way the game is going to end is once somebody gets 15 buildings built on their tableau after you have the starting player everybody's got their gold their town hall you're also going to be taking top three of these guys here and then you're going to be selecting one of them and placing it face down on uh, next to a pre-built town piece which is going to be the town hall so they can go anywhere on these adjacent spaces and then you're going to go ahead and place it unbuilt so this guy here has the bureau and this one over here has a oh this looks like a church here unbuilt and ready to go that is the basic setup go ahead and have the score totaling area separate this little score chart here which tells you how you're going to be scoring throughout the game as as well as wanted cards the last thing you need to know about the game uh, is going to be this area here and these guys you're gonna go ahead and draw three random silver wanted cards which is gonna be game and scoring bonuses you're gonna find three random ones and then you're gonna find their gold counterparts which are the exact same in gold the higher value one and place the gold on top of those and place them to the side so now you've got three additional game awards which as players complete these they're gonna be taking these cards to gain points with them once the silver one is taken as well there's no more of these to excess. Additionally, you're going to have one, two, three, four, five, and six of uh, these little spaces here, which are going to have die numbers on them. And you're going to take two of these uh, town tiles and place them underneath, just like this. And that is pretty much the setup for the game. To begin, the first player, which is the person who's got the hat, is going to roll all the die and then place these die on the associated spaces based on the amount of pips located on the die. So in this case here, you're going to have two ones a two and two threes and now you're ready for the round to begin this player is going to go ahead and select first and they can do uh, select any of these three spaces here when selecting a die there's three different things you can choose to do the first thing is you can choose to remove the die and then you can choose to buy one of the areas underneath that specific location in this case you can have the inn or you could have the courthouse However, if you don't want to do either of those, you could simply choose to remove this die and activate every building in your tableau with that number on it. In, in, in the bottom area of each of your little uh, tiles here are going to have either a number or a question mark. Question mark means any die number and the singular pips and whatnot. Like for instance, this one is going to uh, basically happen whenever a two is used to activate. So in this case, if you chose to remove this and activate your town, only the town hall would activate, in which case you're going to be able to spend a coin to build a building and building just simply flips little uh, town, town pieces over. The other thing you can choose to do other than simply taking or choosing to activate is you can actually remove a piece. So let's say you don't want this in and you also don't want your opponent to get it you can remove this 
and remove one of these pieces here. And then you can simply collect three gold into your town hall, which you can be used on later turns and replace it with a new town tile. So those are the three things you can do uh, in terms of the die, okay? So on this player's turn, he's got his he's got his three coins to start with, just like everybody else, and he's going to go ahead and think about what he wants to do. Now this is not built yet, this uh, this little census bureau. So because of that, he may or may not want to build it, and he may or may not want to build things next to it. If you look at all these tiles here, they have different things on them. The first thing is you'll notice that the die pips here. These illustrate whenever somebody utilizes a uh, action on the cards, something will happen. And this one says, you know, you'll gain a population, and your opponents will lose one of these coins or this one over here spend a coin you gain two population and these are the population here there's other ones that are like end of game scoring which this one says here for each population you have you'll gain some kind of benefit or you'll, for, you'll gain points for each and every thing that you have they're all different random as far as what you're building in your town and the other ones are these guys here these ones here are basically native settlements they do not have a specific side in which you need to build on because they're simply when they come on the field they are already pre-built and they also will activate the the moment they come into play that little arrow means as soon as it hits the field you're going to gain whatever bonuses it presents like for instance this one says you get one of these guys here in addition to two gold coins but they won't activate after you've placed them so they're good for a one-time use although there are some other tiles that will help you benefit by having these guys on your field and they also do count towards the one time uh, uh towards the uh, 15 tile minimum needed to end the game so okay let's see what this player wants to do let's say he wants to have a carpenter because he wants to start being able to build so he'll go ahead and take this and place that there and he'll remove this three here that just goes off to the side a new tile comes out now it's the next player's turn and this player now gets to choose one of the four die here so they'll remove that one there and they'll take this distillery and place it down remember they always come face down because they are not built just yet additionally look at your cards too these all have specific abilities that you can use throughout the game this one says you can re-roll your chosen die and gain two dollars and if you do you may not pay to change it while certain times you'll be well, you'll be able to utilize your coins to basically move up or down on the track as well as utilizing your coins for certain things based on your cards here so that is a very interesting ability this one says when claiming a tile you may plus or minus one your die one additional time for free so instead of just going up one at the cost of one coin you can actually go up here so that might actually help you be able to purchase new and interesting things throughout your turn and you still have to pay for your first time you use it okay so he's one and selected his another tile comes out and now it's this player's turn here again and remember this player is going to want to build this uh so what is he going to do well he could go ahead and take this off which is in case they'll let him have this guy here. And when this comes into play, he's going to give himself a population. You can go ahead and place anywhere you want. And as well as a free build. So we'll go ahead and flip this guy over. Why? Because at the end of the round here, there's something interesting that happens. So we'll show you what happens there. But that lets you build this, turning it face up. Another one of these comes out. And now it's this player's turn. And this player has a choice of a three or a two. And in his case, it doesn't really make a difference. So maybe he'll just go for this mine here. So the mine will go there. Another one of these guys will pop out. And it'll be face down. Now this has been used, so there's only one die left. And when there's only one die left, that will end the round and trigger this specific die on each player's tableau, which means that for uh, they can go ahead and choose one of their buildings to activate with this specific number. And in this case, this player here can activate this one because it's a three. So he can go ahead and choose to build a building. So he'll do that, which is very nice for him. And this player here, he only has the town hall. And the town hall says you can choose any number die, which is the question mark here. He can spend one currency, and then he's able to go ahead and build a building so we'll go ahead and flip this mine over now if he didn't want to do that if he didn't want to build a building he could simply go ahead and gain one coin from this little bank area here after that happens this is going to move over to this player's turn here you're going to go ahead and roll the die again and you're going to continue playing the game until somebody gets 15 built buildings at that point the round is going to end by everybody finishing their turn up and you're going to score points but before we go on to talk about point scoring let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about these guys here so for instance this one here is a railroad and for each adjacent railroad you're going to be scoring additional points uh, you're also going to be scoring negative points based on certain things there's uh, some other ones that are pretty negative but help you in certain ways as well this one here says whoever has the most of these little uh, Indian settlements built next to each other is going to score four victory points and then you're going to have these guys here which have pluses on them so this one's going to score you two points when next to a pink building one point when next to a red building and uh, certain other ones will score victory points in other ways and these are all going to be based on 
these top right hand corners here with pluses associated. So that one's going to score you a plus one, but you can't, there's certain rules to some of these tiles here and they all have different ones. You can read the rules. It's very, very simple how they function. Here's another one over here. And this is just end of game scoring, which means you're going to get points based on certain rules. Uh, whatever the specific square means, it's going to score you points. But anyway, that's the basic idea of the game. It's going to keep going round and round until somebody eventually builds this really beautiful uh, Old West Empresario, or Empire, I suppose it's called. And uh, you're going to be calculating your points. You're going to look at this little board here. And I'll just take one of these guys here. And then you're going to start writing down your players' names, how many points they scored for settlements, which are these guys here for four points, the inns, which are going to be the little pink ones, this one here. So you'll score plus one point for every green that's next to it. So if this was here, he'd score one point for having a native settlement next to it. You have mines, which can score you points based on these colors here. Distilleries, saloons, they all do something different and unique. Undertakers give you negative points when buildings are built next to them, but they have some kind of benefit. And then after you've tallied up all these, you're going to go into the additional building uh, bonuses. For instance, railroads, cotton, oil, additional scoring when it comes to these wanted cards. And when you pick these guys up, you're going to be scoring points as well. So this one says a town hall that gets completely constructed by being surrounded upon is going to get to score this one. So if, if this player here managed to surround his entire town hall, doodle 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 like that, he'd score this one first. And if the second player was able to do that next, he'd get this here. But you can gain these bonus points and place them here. And then you're also going to get victory points for every three gold coins you have left over at the end of the game, as well as for each population you have. You'll tally up this and this and make a total. And whoever has the most at the end of the game is going to be the winner of the Old West Empresario. That's the idea. Let's talk about it. Okay, so caveats for Old West Empresario. And the first thing is there's a lot of character abilities. Yes, there's the base one. And if you're probably not used to these specific type of games, go with this. But if you are an advanced or even moderate gamer, I would suggest playing with the advanced ones. They're a lot more fun and there's a ton of them. I think there's about 15 of these guys in total. There's also a ton of different wanted achievements and you have the silver and gold. So that means that even if you don't get it the first time around, you can get it the second time. But if you're playing with three or four, it's likely that you may not get every single one because it's important as to what you choose and what you don't. Spending coins is going to let you move from maybe a five die to turn that into a six or turn it into a four. And utilizing gold to do that is very important. But what's more important is making sure all your buildings are built. Built buildings where you're going to score points in at the end of the game. And it's not just building buildings, but also how you place them. Make sure your railroads are lined up along with your native settlements. And can you get those native settlements around an inn? Because that'll get you bonus points as well. If you build a well and you have things that are around it, it's going to score you one point for each. There's also these guys here, which do nothing on their own, but at the end of the game, they're going to be worth more points, provided you have exactly what they require. And those can be very, very useful. Sometimes when you build something, it might not give you any points at the end of the game, but it can help you in progressing your town into the point where you can gain a lot of points. And of course, course, even finishing it before other players, thusly reducing the amount of points they have. This game is not necessarily aggressive when it comes to playing against somebody, but you can choose certain items or certain town pieces that they are going to want. You can also take a specific die off of a specific location because you know that they want to activate a certain number on their specific town tableau, and that can actually mess people up pretty good. So make sure to diversify as well. If you build all threes and only one three gets rolled, you can bet that I'm going to be taking that three just to make sure that you can't activate your town spaces. Very, very important. Uh, additionally, there is a lot going on as far as where you want to place, how you want to place. It's very nice because not only is the game very, very simple on one hand, but it's also got a complex nature to it. And the more you play, the more points you're going to start noticing, the more ways you can start kind of diversifying on this specific track here with a ton of different ways to score points. My suggestion, pick a couple that you really want to focus on and then score around those, adding in a additional points when you can. This game overall is a lot of fun. I like Pioneer Days quite a bit. That's basically the Oregon Trail. And this one here, Old West Impresarios, basically you're building the town after you've gotten to Oregon. So it is the sequels of the game, but they do not play very similarly. They have a little bit of similarity. So if you like that game, this game is definitely going to be up your boat. <laughs> up your boat. Yeah, I guess. But if you do not like that game, you still might like this one. They're not necessarily hand in hand. I personally enjoy both of these games, and this one here is a ton of fun. It's very quick and very easy to play. I like the artwork. I like the diversity that it shows on all the different characters, all the different buildings you get. There's a ton of choice in the game, and it's just a ton of fun. If you haven't played a game that involves 
involves dice drafting, this is definitely one I would suggest picking up as a beginner dice drafter. Even that being said, the fact that you can kind of go advanced into how you play the game and how you can kind of compete against each other, you're gonna have a lot of fun with this one. People who won't like this game, people who do not like dice drafting, people who don't like building towns and whatnot, if you like the Sim City experience, this might not necessarily be for you. Additionally, players that don't like people hate drafting from them that might be a thing that you might not enjoy there's no losing turns in this game and even the die rolling isn't as random as one might think because you're able to manipulate pretty much everything in this game overall this is a really really good game i really enjoyed myself and i think you guys will like it too if you haven't tried games like this and even if you have this is one that's a little different than all the rest of them i play that involve dice drafting overall Solid, solid little game. TMG does it again for me. I really like this one and I know you guys will as well.